How do you do? Just a word of friendly warning. I think it will thrill you. It may shock you. It might even horrify you. So if any of you feel that you do not care to subject your nerves to such a strain, now is your chance to... Uh, well, we warned you. Well, well, hello, listeners. <laughs> now that I've met you, would you agree to never seeing each other again? <gasps> oh, That's just something. kidding. It's something. We'll it talk about that later. D. Uh, I'm Mikey B, and today is my birthday. Oh, yeah. it's your Mikey B Happy day. Yeah. It really is your real birthday. It's my my literal real birthday. Because it snowed and we had a snowpocalypse. We had snowpocalypse, so it just worked out. Now we're yeah. having a hump day podcast, late night, Wednesday, on Humpty. my official birthday, which is why I'm hosting, Good and night. it's also my movie today. It's like the universe uh, arranged this. Yeah, it's like Amy says, everything's lined up. Yeah, all your choices in life were perfect to we're bring perfect. you to this. So brought me right here. And there's me. no place on my birthday I'd rather be. Aww. Really? Aww. Yeah. Yeah, oh, with thanks. you guys. And talking to you all. So, hi. Talking to y'all. Hi. So, I do want to meet each other again. <laughs> um, so, with me is <laughs> Amy. That's me. I'm Amy. That's Amy. Yeah. How hi. are you, Amy? I'm okay. I'm good. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And then there's Freddie. Hello, Mike. Well, hi, Freddie. <laughs> Happy <laughs> birthday, real, Mike. Well, hi. This is a real conversational style. Yeah, I love M- it. Millie, uh, Millie's right here between us being real cute. She's been she very is. affectionate she's this evening. It's a lot of love a in this room right bug. now. Yeah. 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 And she's then a dog. to my left is previous birthday, still his birthday month. Everybody, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> it is Kelly. <laughs> quiz, quiz kid, <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> Quiz Kid Kelly. Kelly. Quiz Kid Kelly Combrink. <laughs> I thought, thank you. Don't yeah, be your pants. We have the uh, soundtrack, Amy Man. Amy. Amy. Not, Amy, oh. Amy. 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 Amy Man. I, I spelled my name different. Is there a Freddy different. character in there? In, in our movie that we watched, which is Magnolia. We'll be talking about it later. Uh, I, would, I could see myself dropping my gun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I could see that. Yeah. Are you I feeling a little froggy? Freddy? Yeah. definitely never molested anyone. There you go. <laughs> so that's my connection to the movie. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Kelly thinks I... Uh... <laughs> Might have uh, molested him. Maybe. Yeah. May have. Yeah. It's a, <laughs> that's a horrible but also great moment that I have thoughts about later. Yeah. We'll get to it. But what? Uh, the molesting? That, yeah. Just the confession scene. Oh. Yeah. I, I feel like there's some intention behind it. Where? Well, anyway, we'll get to it. We'll get to yeah. it. We'll get to it. We got a lot to get to because it's yeah. a long one. Yeah. So, it's, a long one. it's been snowing in Cincinnati. Yeah. Oof. It's, it's coming again. It's coming again. And it's I, coming. I can say, there. I don't mind snow. For January, February, yeah, December, I don't mind it ne- right now. But yeah. what I don't like is snow on the weekends. Yeah, because that's bullshit. my going outs times. Yeah, yeah, fuck that shit. Yeah. I want it to prevent me from going to work. Yes, that's when I need it. That's most. the that's only it. time snow is really okay. That might happen tomorrow. Yeah, who it knows? might. Well, I gotta take my mom. Well, yeah, yeah that mark. could be a, a little yeah. problem. It could so be. <laughs> this is the most. Snow we've had in a really long time. Snow. Yeah. I licky boom boom down. Like, yeah. I know people out there that don't know much about Ohio think we're just buried in snow much. at all times. No, mm. Cincinnati's pretty pretty mild during most winters. We're in, we're yeah. in the Ohio River Valley, y'all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, but there's white stuff heat everywhere, <laughs> just like in the Great Peter North. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but... We did get a lot of snow, so it prevented us from traveling to be together, and I'm not sure how a show like this, where we're just so used to staring into each other's eyes, would work mm. via Skype, so I hope you're okay with us pushing yeah. it back a little. We, I actually tried to hit the roads, and they were they were nasty, yeah. so yeah, needed I didn't to be rescheduled. I didn't leave my house. I, I went to the grocery store for the, for the bread and milk run Friday night, mm-hmm. and the lines were fucking insane, mm-hmm. and then I did not leave my house again until I had to go to work. On Monday morning, and it was fabulous. I I highly recommend staying in your home, laying on the couch, and playing Skyrim. 
Meanwhile, while she's playing Skyrim. Mm, I'd love to get to Skyrim. Oh, tease it, Freddy. Tease it. Mike and I and Casey from Bloody Good Horror played Diablo 3 together. I love Diablo. Great game. It's very fun. It was super fun. uh, Our Discord server, I think we've cracked the code on how to really use that for something cool. I've created a bunch of categories and voice channels for group gaming and group movie viewing and group and music group listening if you want to. I'll add something for that. Yeah, which is what it's usually used for. Mm-hmm. And we could do a Her group. What? Amy's watching Sexy. Star Trek. You can watch along with me. Oh, that'd be fun. And uh, yeah. I, yeah. Could, I could see Amy like, she'd be like, I don't want to watch in a group. I know I don't. This is my time. I don't want to do that. Well, it was fun because we, um, I was a little bummed on Saturday. I was hoping to go out and, you know, maybe a little road trip, but then the, the weather was coming in. And so then we got, um, I got a little coffee and put a little whiskey in it. Mm. And then uh, Freddie mm-hmm. and I met up and started playing Diablo. And that was really fun. And then I was getting a little bit of a buzz. And I kind of got a little teary eyed because of how nice it was. <laughs> And we're all just sitting and talking, oh Casey God. and Freddie, yeah. and I'm like, I'm all, this is like the best thing ever. Don't we're feel bad for that, man. Games. I get I get choked oh. up when I'm when I'm feeling good. It's yeah, just like you, you take a moment to be grateful, and it's yeah. just like you're it was like, awesome. this could be a lot shittier, and it, like it's it was really the nice. Best. Yeah. I it was felt a, like a barbarian. Yeah, you were a barbarian and a great <laughs> barbarian. Man, I've only ever played Diablo on PC. Mm. Yeah, here's the thing that sucks. All right, no cross platform. No. So I have Diablo 3. I had it on the PC w- way back. Mm-hmm. I don't even have a PC anymore. I haven't for years. Xbox, have it on there. And then eventually Mike's like, you know, the way to do it's the Switch because you can take it wherever and it's really good on yeah. Switch. And it is. This Friendship is, with me is not good for anybody's it. pocketbook. No, he's an, he's an expensive date. I am. I am expensive. <laughs> but, well, my son but, has a Switch, so I can, you know. Yes. Yeah. Does he have Diablo 3? I don't think so. Will you buy it for him? Maybe. I'll <laughs> buy, can, buy it for me. <laughs> we can play it together? <laughs> Maybe. Well, here's yeah. the thing, too. Like, if you think about it, you've had it on those other platforms, but, like, when you get the right game on the right platform in the right environment, then you're playing it. So, yes, while you haven't bought it before, now you've got it in a way that you're going to play it and appreciate right. it. Right, yeah. Do so you play cooperatively? Cooperatively. I've a, only ever played single player. A oh, my party word. of four. Yeah. Can I tell your secret? Pretty sure you were laying in bed naked playing the game with everybody. Why is that a secret? Everyone should naked. know that. Oh, you had underwear on. Oh, uh, did I? <laughs> <laughs> I thought I thought I was wearing like my pajamas. Wasn't I in my pajamas and a hoodie? It was really cold. No. Maybe I was naked. I don't know. <laughs> well, here's. Well. The- <laughs> <clears throat> Just so uh, listeners does that know, make it uncomfortable. If, if mm-hmm. you're if you're ever uh, reading my Facebook uh, messages or, or comments, oh, you're naked for sure. B- most of the time, I'm naked. Mm-hmm. You're, and there's you're giving a turd naked, halfway out of you. You give off naked energy. <laughs> what did well, you say about turds? <laughs> I said you got a brown tail. When no, you're, uh, no, none of uh, that. Well, what was funny is uh, we were <laughs> as we were. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm bring it no, back. No, please. Keep we going. Uh, we were testing out the voice, and then Freddie um, and I tested out the video because you can also video chat through that whole thing. And Uh-oh. I turned on my video on, and Freddie's like, "This feels pervy." Yeah. And he sent me a screenshot of him being able to look into my room while I was playing, <laughs> and then I realized sitting on my um, sitting on the uh, coffee table in front of my couch is like a, a lush bag and <laughs> a big bottle of hand lotion. <laughs> like. If someone's going to be peeking into my room right now, I don't want the giant pink Lush bag He just likes products. to smell good. I just like to smell well, good. Free of sulfate. And my, 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 <laughs> Stand my hand truth, pump Mike. of hand lotion just to be, just to be uh, streaming out there to the uh, world. So yeah. yeah, so if you want to join us on Discord, that's one of the many perks you get from yeah. being a patron, mm-hmm. a Patreon member. Go to patreon.com slash N-O-T-L-P. I'll show you my lush sack. Mm-hmm. And you'll see his lush sack. It, it is lush. <laughs> in that viewing party we talked about putting together like a year ago or something, I we finally know how to do it. So it's just a matter of uh, putting it on the calendar. Yeah. We'll so. probably do like some trial runs. Is just keep keep on keep on the Discord. So yeah, all we need it. to do now is get a calendar. Mm-hmm. We need to invest in a calendar. And then we can get a marker. That's the first yeah. thing you need. And to then, get. then we can put it on there. And then you get the chicks. Or just hope that everything's lined up right for when you see a push, 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 a push notification <laughs> from Discord right. that yeah. says we're streaming or yep. we're on. Also, just because we're not, yeah, on Discord like during the day when we're at work or whatever, 
uh, that doesn't mean there aren't great people on our Discord mm-hmm. uh, server. Yeah, you can get on there and make friends. But we can't right. guarantee anything. At it any could time. Be, it could be that one bad dude. Here's, well, yeah. I'm I'm just kidding. <laughs> it could I don't be know the one. You know who you are. Uh, there's always at least two people in there every time I've gone in. Yeah. And uh, sometimes more. So, and they're great, cool people. Yeah. One, of, one uh, of our Discord people was even talking about starting like a roll d20 which would be awesome um are we allowed to say their names their usernames i don't i I guess okay yeah well well just that because there was an awesome story when we were playing diablo part of that led to me like having that moment where i was really appreciating is um one of my friends dropped in a um just a random person dropped in this this crazy character into um, freddie casey and i's game of diablo and we got trounced by it (laughs) it slaughtered and but we were being cheered on by um a couple people who were in the discord in the was that was celebrating us i'm like how cool how like this is fun this is like what like connected gaming and connected community is all about so it's it really, really fun cool. it's it kind of takes me back to the days of when you hung out at the arcade and you would watch a couple of people play street fighter or something and yeah. you know just kind of watch and kick back and have fun four and player teenage mutant ninja turtles was my uh, oh, yes. arcade that arcade was good game shit. choice to stand and watch and play yeah, yeah. I had a I had a moment with um the Simpsons. Do you remember the Simpsons oh, arcade yeah. game? It was very similar yeah. to the four player. And it's the probably X-Men the same one. engine. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Remember they did the next man one. Basically, so, yeah. There's all the X- same thing. There's X Men versus Avengers too. Yeah. Yeah. And then, then there was like Golden Axe. I mean, there are all these beat 'em ups. Oh. Yeah. We all sound like a bunch of nerds. We are nerds. Yeah. I just want to play Skyrim. We are nerds. Bum, 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 bum. Yeah, I got it. That was fun too, listening to you get killed by the snow troll. Frost troll. Frost troll. <laughs> the noises you were making. I'll I thought you were beating Freddy at yeah. one point. Like, yeah. Freddy, are you okay? Is Amy gone crazy? It's like, nope, Frost troll. I think Amy gone crazy. Fucking turd. I want to have your baby. <laughs> <laughs> so, so. All right. What's up, everybody? No. Y'all watching anything cool? Just fine. Yeah, I was. I'd never finished the last. I think two yeah, seasons. We gotta I go back. didn't finish either the last or the last two, but yeah. we started because uh, uh, Elise has never seen it. Yeah, and I love me some Raylan Givens and some yeah. Boyd Crowder. Boyd Crowder actually tops Raylan oh, a little yeah. bit oh, for yeah. me. Yeah. Um, so I'm very excited, and I've forgotten a lot of it. So it's, Raylan it's Givens, so... you got a lot of nerve coming in here. <laughs> <laughs> How many times do you hear that in that series? A lot. You hear that a lot. Well, Raylan, as uh, I live and breathe, <laughs> as I live and breathe was the one. Yeah. What about the apple pie moonshine lady? I haven't got there yet. Oh, oh she's great. She is great. She is in everything. What's I can almost name? remember her name. Margo. Margo Badobo. Mar- Margo Martindale. Margo Martindale. That's oh right. Gosh. Nice so that's a great name. name. Amy. Wow, Amy. She was in The Riches Look and a million you. other things. Mm-hmm. Amy's posing. Strike she a pose. Is. Did you watch Vice Principles at all? Nah. I love Vice Principles. Fucking great. Walton so Goggins. Good. One of his best roles, I think. I'm sure yes. I'll make it around to it. You should. You guys. Oh, it's Santa Clarita Die. It's good, too. Yeah, I'm going to make it around to that, too. Sorry. True Detective started. I have not watched it yet. Oh, yes. But the I'm hearing it's back to the flavor of the first one. Can it be I redeemed? I don't know. Ooh, I, I'm I interested. smell a uh, Scotch and True mm-hmm. Detective mm-hmm. redo. I would very much like it to be, yeah. uh, while, while I do believe at the end, True Detective Season 1 kind of... Uh, Shit the bed slightly. Shit the bed slightly. Slight. Only slightly. Just Only, a little bit of a chart. Is it because chart. you wanted a a real vulgar display of Lovecraft mythos monstrosity at the end? Well, I did want that, but no. Uh, for me, it was just I felt like, and I don't want to spoil anything, mm-hmm. but I felt like the reveal so was less. I was kind of like, I agree. That yeah. you want a little mo? I just thought like all of that led up to. Mm. Yeah. but it was still great don't get me wrong i sure. fucking love season one and i'm, yeah. I'm hoping season three uh can reach that what were you going to say my well, good no sir? that's the season two i thought maybe I, I i going back season one left you wanting more which i thought you would get in season two and you definitely don't i never Dude. even watched season two even i watched like we one watched or two, two episodes yeah, yeah and, we I was did. Like, nah. and i do like uh tallington mc uh face what is that guy's name yeah, Tom you're, you're tallington. Right. tallington mcface uh you know everybody uh, knows that you mean the dude from friday night Nightlight. The tall guy. He, Vince Vaughn. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I like Vince Vaughn. A lot of people don't. Oh, I do. Reason. Is he tall? I he run, is really I tall. Run, uh, He's telling cold on him. <laughs> you run hot and cold? Yeah, I loved him in... Uh, have you seen... Um, 
what was the name of that movie about the conscientious objector in World nope. War II? No. Definitely haven't seen that. Uh, With uh, Andrew Garfield, where he's like, oh, oh it's all uh, like, Dr. Uh, Dr. Hillenstein. Dr. Doesn't Kill. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it was called. I didn't oh, see it, but I remember Hawkeye it. Ridge or. Something Ridge, yeah. Fuck like, Off Hawk, Ridge. Hawk, Hawk, Tollington's Ridge. Well, anyway. Pizza Town Ridge. It's not, it's not Heartbreak Ridge, because that was Eastwood. That's Clint Eastwood. Uh, it was something Ridge. It was a Heart, a, heart oh, Fix guys. Ridge. Was you it Knuckle go. Sandwich Ridge? Yeah. I don't remember exactly the name of the movie, but I will <laughs> tell you this. Vince Vaughn plays like a really interesting drill sergeant E type of character in that. That movie, I thought, looked so stupid. It did mm-hmm. look stupid to me, the too. The trailers look so dumb. Like How they did a total did disservice. Hacksaw Ridge. Hacksaw Thank Ridge. You. I thought I was Hacksaw gonna, Ridge Duggan. I I thought I was going to laugh my ass off at that movie. That yeah. deserved a better laugh, you guys. Was it so money? Very but good. it is. Was it so money? It and is, didn't even know it. It's such a sweet message, anti-war Freddy, pacifism he kicks message. A grenade. He does. It's it's really good. And then he gets drafted into the NFL because of that yeah. kick. Wasn't that yeah. what's his face? Um, racist. Oh yeah, Mel Gibson. Yeah. Yeah. Well. I like to dissociate him from the fact that I like. It wasn't movie. full of ra- racist no. uh, overtones. So. No. He didn't wish that anybody got raped right. by a pack of <coughs> uh, cigarettes. <coughs> yeah, mm. uh, but I do like Vince Vaughn. Yeah. Have you seen uh, that brawl? And in- yes, I have. Is it good? It's 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 fun. It's a it's the style of a seventies exploitation movie. Yeah, I'm into that. Uh, so if you like those old prison movies, including like the way it's paced, the over the top moments. Um, so it's not for everyone, but I thought it was fun. Yeah, I like violence. Yeah. I love Craig Zoller. I think the stuff he does is really cool. What movie did you say? A Brawl in Cell Block 99. 99, yeah. Oh. It's not what you think from the title. Okay. <laughs> they are not just brawling. It's about a child spelling bee. Yeah. Oh. Yep, okay. the shitty Beatles. It's about uh, when a guy invents what is both a shawl and a bra, and he mm-hmm. tries to get it patented. And it's from his cell block where he's doing time for embezzlement. Oh. I'm an old lady and I need extra support and warm <laughs> shoulders. Sure <Shaw> enough. So. <laughs> ah, there's a lot going on there between all of you. Try to unpack all that, listeners. Okay. You might have to listen twice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just like Magnolia. You have exactly. to watch it twice. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, would you like to move on? Oh, let's do. Can sure. Lives? Okay. We'll be back. Hello, boys and girls. It's time for straight to video Russian roulette. Hi. Hey, Amy. Uh, had me watch. What? Amy, Amy made you watch Los Olvidados. Yeah. Uh, this is not a literal, literal translation, I don't think, si. but in English, what the water's left behind from the Onetti brothers. Oh. Whenever somebody's, a, they're brothers and they put their name and then the brothers, like, they're like, oh, you know those boys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know the Onetti brothers. <laughs> yeah. They just causing trouble down in Hazard County. <laughs> <laughs> Are they in the holler? <laughs> It was uh, good. Thank you. Can you do it one more time? <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Wow. Uh, spoke to my heritage. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I hear you. Those Duke boys. I, ha- I had a uh, had oh, the General Lee to- toy. <laughs> oh, was it the one that you had to like? You you would like roll it on the ground. Roll- what well, you like would get the. Uh, <laughs> No, listen. <laughs> Kelly's doing that. Are you talking about the kind where you pull it back and then it, it yeah. winds it up? And then it had like the little barn that you could like jump it through. Oh, yes. you have that. Yes. That's awesome. Yeah. I, it was the one you could put the two dolls in. Oh, yeah. I remember Sorry. that. Do you yeah, worry that figures. like when you go back to your Dukes of Hazard toys, like you think about them and you're like, do you worry that they were racist? I never occurred to me. No, I don't either. But I'm just wondering like what was on the... the, the well, obviously the rebel flag. Being was it on the toys it was, though? It was oh, yeah. on them, yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I mean, they would just seem like some good old boys to me. I don't know. (laughs) They never meant no harm. I feel like the Dukes of Hazzard (laughs) would have been like, I'm so sorry. And they would have painted over that. Yeah. They'd have been like, orange paint's not expensive. We didn't mean any harm. It's not hurting anyone's feelings. Yeah. We just shot, so we sell moonshine to everyone. Right. Do you guys hear still? I still hear you. Do they, they generally, um, the. I usually 
usually hear it from kids who are trying to, to be redneck, and I wonder if they know where that all started. Oh, the the car horn? Yeah, that yeah. car horn. Yeah. Yeah. Just I, I knew a guy who had one that played the Mexican hat dance. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah it was pretty great. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded just like that. Wow! So you, uh, you just had that installed in the in this room just for this. And yeah. you could have bought the one where you could change it too. Like, yeah, yeah, like there's the cucaracha. Like a, yes, I remember yeah, that. Yeah. Cucaracha, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I like to get one that plays when doves cry. Ooh, <laughs> that's awesome. I don't think they make it. <laughs> I'm not gonna keep going. That's good. Freddy. <laughs> uh, Los Al- Alvidados. Mm-hmm. Uh, these folk, this is very much, by the way, uh, Kelly, you might, you might like this. I'm not, I don't want to shit on it because it's not a terrible movie. It's just, it's an homage to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Okay. And instead of it being set out in the, you know, after the meat plant is shutting down or automated and the, the locals have to fend for themselves as much as possible, it's after a major flood happened. Uh, in a, a town, this is true, called Epicuan. I'm not mm-hmm. sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Where the whole town was underwater. Yeah. And the people who who didn't leave uh, become basically the family from Texas Chainsaw. I feel like that would make a great short story. It's just been done over and over and over again. Uh, yeah. Now, this is literally, I, I want to say this was, was it I like the idea. Of, I like I the was, idea of yeah. what floodwaters leave behind. Yeah. yeah. Well, I didn't know what, um, at first, uh, from the title and the description, it's a documentary crew who is going back with a survivor to visit the the town. And I expected a found footage movie, which I honestly, I was dreading a little because I'm just not in that mindset for found footage lately. That's kind of like that movie I watched with Tommy Jane, where they took the woman back to where her Mm -hmm. Jonestown family cult kind of happened. Yeah. Was it a found footage? Uh, it was like one of those like kind of hybrids where part of it's found footagey, but then there's also regular gotcha. camera work. Um, this one had kind of similar, only there's very little of the actual POV stuff. Yeah. Um, the setup you have the van. It's very much a copy of the van from Texas Chainsaw. The drive, all the their shots, the tracking shot where he, you know, where he follows uh, Marilyn Burns into the house. Mm. That they riff on that. There's the gas station. Do you feel like sometimes p- filmmakers who do this, they think if if we make it seem like an homage, people will lo- like it gets them a pass, like a handicap. Uh, well, like where they can say I'm we're sure. not ripping it off. It's an homage, but really, I, c- I could see that these directors really do love Texas Chainsaw. Yeah, but it's like, and again, this is not like a shoddily put together movie it's it's they they know how to make a movie yeah it just feels kind of like kids playing uh in their dad's clothes kind of thing though yep. when when someone apes the in an homage when they do an homage this way when they're not bringing anything really new to it other than right. the setting uh it's just there's nothing really there that's worthwhile in my opinion for me agreed but if you really love retreading texas chainsaw by all means, this is a very competently made retread of Texas Chainsaw. I'll probably just watch in a different Texas language. Chainsaw again sometime. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, there you go. I would just watch the remake. Maybe at the maybe at the drive-in. Sure. Perhaps yeah. on a Halloween. Maybe mm-hmm. with a fox. No. Maybe in a box. We have a fox around here, ladies and gentlemen. It shows up on next door all the time. <laughs> yeah, we saw it one night. <clears throat> I saw a dead coyote on the highway this morning. Oh yeah, it was it? destroyed. It was. It was right oh. in the middle too. It was right along the uh, dotted line. Was there a little say... bird seed right in the middle of the road? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh! There was a sign that said "Yikes." <laughs> <laughs> I always say I'm sorry <clears throat> to I can't the roadkill. The... I felt. Yeah, I always feel bad when I'm I see. I'm like him. sorry. Oh, it's like you're honoring their spirit. Yeah. I got a soft spot for any canine-ish yeah. creature to begin with. Sure. That thing was messed Werewolves. up. Werewolves. That thing was just guts and hair. Dogmen. Oh. When I saw it, it was still in, mostly intact. No, this was guts and hair by the time I got uh. there. But look out for that fox. Yeah. We Watch saw one doggies. night. It's beautiful. 
Are the foxes, have you know, do you know foxes are becoming less aggressive because people have been domesticating them so much? I didn't know that, but I do worry about my kitty cats sometimes. Yeah. We've yeah. got, uh, I worry about coyotes too. We've got a wooded area behind our house. Yeah, yeah. coyotes are kind of becoming more and more of a problem in here. In here? In here. My in neighbor saw one uh, with <laughs> yeah. a, walking down the street with a cheeseburger in its mouth. I saw, uh, I saw a coyote under this very table not two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw coyotes shopping at Sephora. Oh. Looking like a fox. I saw a coyote. Uh, he was uh, holding a menu at uh, Trader Joe's. <laughs> Trader Joe's. <laughs> Sarah's perfect. Uh, he was Why trying to get some organic hummus. Trader Joe's. He went to, they had a little cafe. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hmm. Is that more of a Whole Foods situation? Sure. Okay. <laughs> some stuff just happened. <laughs> I like, Mike's like, okay. 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 <laughs> All right, Freddie. Well, so it was like a maybe not so much, but depends on what you're feeling. Call me maybe. Recommend. Right. Call me maybe. Yeah, uh, I don't. I don't recommend. Okay. But I can't say it's shit. All I can say is it's nothing new. It's not worth your time if you are a busy person. <laughs> but if you are a shut in and you're getting some Applebee's delivered. <laughs> And you're a huge fan of uh, yeah. Texas Chainsaw type movies. Right. And all you watch are like movies about uh, uh, destitute families that have turned to the extreme. Mm-hmm. Then yes. This is the one. <laughs> well, this is one for you. After you've gone through your Netflix watch list. Right. If you're an immortal right. being. <laughs> yeah. But, but. Uh, if you want to have a good time, watch the Santa Clarita Diet. Watch the second <laughs> season. So good. I can't is wait it? to get to it. Timothy, I didn't, I didn't finish the first season, but I, I did like him. it. I was not a huge fan of the first season, yeah. but it was enough to kind of string me along. In the second season, it really be- comes into its own. Okay. It's I love very him. Very funny. All right. Maybe I'll yeah. get back into it. He is so good. He's one of my favorite actors. Gerald McCraney turns up in the second what? season. I just talked about should him. Yeah, I, I love him. Should I watch like a synopsis of season one and just jump right into season two? You could. You could just okay. go online and read a synopsis to catch you up, or you could yeah. just watch the previously on that Netflix so like conveniently that. puts at the beginning. I, I can't um, handle that. You with gotta start from the beginning. Snowpocalypse. Yeah. I um, did uh, Legos and uh, I got into this this little television show called Game of Thrones. Season oh, five. Oh, you finally started Game of Thrones? Oh, well, season well, five. Not, uh, season five. Oh, okay. I, I broke after four and then I haven't watched it since. I think I was mm. watching four pretty close Ooh, to current. You need mm. a previously on for that shit. Yeah, the previously on was like, this show was really good. And you then know, I've been watching through season five and I'm like, Oh, wow, yeah. Good stuff. I haven't watched since The Red Wedding. <laughs> nice Were day. Were you too upset? It. You're a little far behind then. No, I was just like, I've read all the book. Like, yeah. I like the show. Well, it's now a great show. The but... last season and then this coming one are off book. Yeah. Is he even going to bother writing like another I book? I don't know. He said he's writing it to no, match what's happening on the show. People don't understand. I waited it's from a novelization. 2000, basically, 2003 to 2011. It's like a lo- Jurassic World, the Lost. For the fourth fucking book. So Park. you people don't even understand. No, not at all. So if you want to just line up and eat my dick. I did Amy just. I don't want to line up, but I mean, if I if I can get in when it's empty. <laughs> you, did you hipster on uh, Game I of Thrones? I did. Again? I do. I was that. hipster with you, girl. You got yeah. me reading those yeah. books before the show ever came out. Two thousand three, bro. She tried to get me Two. to read them, and I said these are boring and complicated mm-hmm. words. Blah. And but, then uh, the show came out, and I was like, I was wrong. Do you know what I I have? Um, it just the last, in. but but you know what? Uh, Dance with Dragons is boring. <laughs> Oh, it's really? It's not great. It's boring. It isn't great. You know what I, I like? made it through, but it was boring. The Dragon Lance Chronicles. I was just about to say, yeah. guess what I just came in off hold from the library for me? What? Twat. Dragons of Autumn to- Twilight. I'm going to go back. I thought you started to say twat light. <laughs> so, so DZ, get ready for me to talk about that. All right. I got to shoot somebody. I have a movie gun, movie bullet. You guys ready? Mm-hmm. I'm up first. Let's see if I move you die. I movie live. Kelly. <sighs> Thank Jesus. Dave. Andy ain't even here because he's got a rumbly bumbly. Telemarketers. <laughs> I'll decline that. Wow. Did. Did, was that what the gun does now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah it it sends thought. a telemarketer to your phone. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Son of a bitch. All right. Let's see if Andy movie dies. Oh, oh he does. Oh, he did. Um, yeah. Sorry about that, Andy. Uh, seven in heaven. It's on Netflix. I think this will help his reflux. I don't know. It rhymes, so yeah. probably. Two teenagers step into a secret closet and emerge in a terrifying <laughs> alternate reality. So they're gonna go in to play Seven Minutes of Heaven, yeah. where they make out and grope each other's boobs and balls. But could, could you honestly? They go to Narnia. <laughs> 
Oh, Narnia. Imagine a more terrifying <laughs> <Mr. Tumnus>. alternate <laughs> reality than the one we are in. They're groping boobs and balls, and then Mr. Tumnus shows up. <laughs> They must find their way back before the door shuts forever. He's offering uh, uh, Turkish, Turkish delight. delight yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you guys Sky remember rockets at night? <laughs> that made me hurt. Turkish about delight. Teenagers in the closet. Uh, <laughs> did you? Uh, <laughs> do you guys? Do you Premise remember a song called like Little Children from the '60s? It was like a British invasion song where the guys like, Go we gotta like- keep this a secret between us. I'll give you a quarter and give you some candy. And he's talking about kissing her older sister, and he doesn't want the dad of the kids to find out but it sounds like he's telling them to cover up molestation. I haven't, but I'm going to check it out as soon as I get Little home. children. Oh I'll, tell, I'll tell you the artist as soon as my phone's done <laughs> pulling it up. But, uh... Yeah. We're going to... It's going to be Michael Jacks. <laughs> Michael? Rest in peace. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, well, Freddy, stop making those noises and... <laughs> Our Am I supposed to wait till you get this? That depends. I don't want to. That depends on a lot. Little children, Billy J. Kramer and the Dakotas. Oh, Billy J. Kramer. Yeah. He uh, he Billy is in a, in a Beatles documentary I once yeah. owned. Um, I think he was just trying to uh, get some 15 minutes. Uh, here Here's the opening. He's little, got a hard face. Little children, you better not tell on me. <laughs> I'm telling you, little children, I'm telling you better you. not tell what you see. Ooh. And if you're good, I'll give you candy and a quarter. Oh. If you are quiet like you ought to be <gasps> and keep a secret with me. Oh. What is this? It's, it's a song called Little Children. <laughs> this is fun. I'm going to I'm going to record a cover. The very definition. <laughs> you should. By Billy J Kramer from his album The Very Best of. <laughs> mm. Fantastic. Okay, we'll be right back. This week's main attraction is Mikey B's birthday pick from 1999. The hilarious (laughs) Paul Thomas Anderson's Magnolia. Ah, as the good book says, we might be through with the past, but the past ain't through with us. It sure ain't. true. Yeah. And uh, this is uh, one of the most brief descriptions of a an epic three-hour film <laughs> from imdb an epic mosaic of interrelated characters in search of love forgiveness and meaning in the san fernando valley they might as well just said people do things and say things <laughs> and say things <laughs> this think, is yeah. i well uh, sorry but i just no, want to say sorry. like in my journey over the last year and a half through deaths and, and, and depression and trying to figure my shit out through therapy and oprah and uh meditation and whatever this movie just it 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 squiggled by biggle you know what i'm mm-hmm. saying to piggyback off i of really that, get it it got in there it dug in it gets in there i it? wanted to say uh watching this because i've never seen this before mm. and so watching this uh yesterday and today i thought to myself if i had seen this like uh several years ago when i was in a different um place in my life this might have hurt my feelings like in a what i mean is i still would have loved it i think it would have made me very very sad and Mm -hmm. made me look at myself uh you know i just it might have hurt me but sure but watching it this time uh i found it to be very cathartic and um it's great it's a great movie it's because you you wised up you i did wise up up. Mm. i did wise up and just moved on that's right the 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 beautiful thing about what you just said is that i think great movies do this thing where they change in time and i think this movie can be really triggering Mm -hmm. if you're dealing with the past and regret and guilt and shame and it can be incredibly triggering and if it you're not dealing with those things because you've got a different perspective and you're in that cycle of your life then i think it could be incredibly healing and cathartic just like you're saying and it was yeah great choice Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. and for the record like top five all-time favorite movies for me include boogie nights Mm mm-hmm I think this is at least on par with if maybe maybe it might even be a better movie. Yeah. So I'm like reevaluating that because this is only the second time I'd seen it. Mm-hmm. It's definitely a more ambitious movie. Yeah. I, I, I mean, in some ways, I, would, I can see why it would be better. But I think Boogie Nights is a – I mean, it's also a lot of emotional stuff happening, but I also think it's a little breezier. It's a little more fun. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's – 
they're so he's such a cartoon in Boogie Nights that kind you kind of well, uh, I guess that wasn't the right word. It's easier to kind of dismiss the sadness or surrounding Dirk Diggler for sure. Mm-hmm. I mean, not everybody else in the movie, but there's at least kind of a release valve in this one. There really isn't. There, there isn't until you get through to the very end, which this is the, the, the best. Well, to me, the very, very end is the very last moment of the film, which mm-hmm. is where the girl who's been, who's the drug, who's like a recovering drug addict, has found love, like just looks at the camera and she's been sad the entire film. She looks at the camera, split second, smile. Yeah. And you're like, yeah. that part in the movie, it's been, it's been a few, uh, this is a movie I like to return to. I, I love this movie. I saw this movie in the theater. Um, this is a movie I like to return to. you imagine how much to. you'd have to pee? Oh, during that fucking thing. <laughs> I, 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 every time that moment really gets me because you go through a hell of a journey. In fact, I think this is really like a voyeuristic movie mm-hmm. because the actors in this movie are so good. You feel like you are, I feel like I am watching something I'm not supposed to see. I get that. It's like yeah. a real peek into, uh, into all these people's just mm-hmm. lives, especially yeah. the stuff, um, with Jason Robards dying mm-hmm. um and and between him and, and julianne moore uh yeah. real real rough i was yeah. telling and we'll, we'll get to this but i was just telling elise today like there's just like i think i was telling elise i i, I thought this elise anyway. can you call in and confirm <laughs> elise live caller please i don't right know out there maybe, maybe long time listener maybe yeah. i meant to i don't know but there's this moment where um Julianne Moore is at the pharmacy buying oh, yeah. meds. Oh my gosh! And she, oh, it was Elise because she's seen this movie before. And she kind of the pharmacist or dicks to her, yeah. and she like has this freak out. And it was very like, I got it. I Fun was like, fact: that was Pat Healy as the young yeah, pharmacist. Pat Healy, mm-hmm. that's right. Yeah, and Innkeepers. Yeah. What's funny about that movie is like, if you if you can really get into some perspective taking on this, I I it would have to admit I've been the pharmacist. Right, yeah. you see someone and you can put together all the p- pieces of their puzzle right now. Yeah, and you make the judgment. You know what she's doing, and so you want to make this judgment call on this person. But you're taking a snapshot out of their life, right? And you're taking this really dark moment out of this person's life, and you're making that you're being judgy when that's not what that person needs in that moment, right? right. Um, and maybe it's that a, was his a, job. It's a moment with no empathy. It right. doesn't matter that he's right. Right. He is right. Yeah. It's he's it's, right to question what's happening. That he's right both morally, he's doing his due diligence. Right. And he's also correct. Right. In that she is ultimately going to take all these drugs. Right. Um but ostensibly that's not what's happening. But you're not on his side. Yeah. But you have a di- you have a responsibility and that's the interesting thing about this movie. Um is that these characters, while not all the stories totally intertwine, these stories carry common themes of someone who has a responsibility, and what are you doing with that responsibility? Do you abuse that responsibility as a parent, or do you do you carry out that responsibility as a parent? Do you make somebody face something? Uh, there's a police officer, played by John C. Riley. This, where the movie, this movie's when I fell in love with John C. Riley. Hey, he's the heart. He is the heart of this film. He's, He's the heart. heart of a lot of films. He but. and Claudia are the heart. Yes. I was about to say, I consider Claudia to kind of be the... Well, also, Philip Seymour Hoffman's character can't... Yes. And he's heart and soul. I mean, and his... What's he, uh, Phil? Is that right? There's yeah. a lot of heart. There is a lot but of I heart. Think, I think that the... And since I'm obviously, we're going to spoil this. I think that the, the, ro- the, the, the path that... John C. Riley and Claudia are on to maybe find hope and happiness together. I think that's the hopeful heart of the right. movie. Right. So I, I think Philip, Philip, yeah, Philip Seymour Hoffman, and it kind of heartbreaking seeing him, right. especially in this role, because, yeah. and I was reading about this that um, Paul Thomas Anderson really wanted him to just play a very uncomplicated, kind, just simple, but very kind character. And he does. He is this, this nurse who just feels, you know, for his patient and just wants to do right by this guy who's dying. And I'll tell you, man, I, I saw this same age as Mike, uh, 21. Mm-hmm. I remember kind of like openly weeping in the movie theater at mm-hmm. one point or another, but I, at that point in my life, I hadn't experienced that level of pain or like prolonged, just like agony that like what you go through when someone's in hospice. And now that I have and watching this movie again, Mm -hmm. they nailed exactly what it's like to, to go through what hospice care looks like. And 
Um, Philip Seymour Hoffman's character is, is like they, there aren't in, I don't think there are any bad or, um, selfish people. We're not even, they're so selfless hospice people. He just I, felt mm, real. Definitely. He yeah, felt real. And it really, there's this moment again at the end, um, where he gets, um, Jason Robard's son, Tom Cruise, we'll talk about to to come to the house and it's so real like the moment with the dogs barking and this guy has had this just really hard like i mean obviously jason robards is dying so he's going through more but i mean this nurse is going through some shit and he's just trying to like go above and beyond and these dogs are barking and this yeah. like he doesn't know how his son's gonna react. it all felt so real mm-hmm. and just like like it was taken like you said that moment for me felt very like i'm looking in at a real thing and a real moment in these people's lives. It didn't really feel like a movie because there are parts of this movie. I, I when I started it, I started thinking like, I feel like Paul Thomas Anderson and Wes Anderson, while the, their styles are very, very different, I feel like spiritually they can both kind of have this very altered reality. Um, but then as it went through, I felt like Paul Thomas Anderson melted more into a very real place mm-hmm. yes. where it started out kind of an artifice um, and then just became just st- everything was stripped yeah. away again until the frogs. You like, know, it gets me too with his stuff. Like you were saying, like when with Wes Anderson movies, no relation to Paul Thomas Anderson. Oh, that's ironic that you wouldn't it be fun if there was if they're twin brothers. I think the I interchange brothers. their names <laughs> the all the time, brother. to be honest. <laughs> so, Wes Anderson movies, like, there's this calculated um, artistry to every shot that yes. you're very much aware of. And I feel like when he's at his best, Paul Thomas Anderson has a way of turning a camera on and then running you through a scene at, like, top speed where I'm, he's like, I'm filming this shit. It's happening. You may not You, you better pay everything. attention. Yeah. Pay attention because right. I'm not turning the camera off until i'm done with you and he did that like like the first time i remember seeing that from him was in a uh, boogie nights where there's the nightclub scene oh, where, they're, yeah. where they're dancing and everything and he pans he gets around to most of the characters mm-hmm. throughout that scene but he, he does it feels like he does it for the whole movie in this one yeah he, he does a lot of those shots that's with, the same thing i got in but in boogie nights it was a different scene it was the scene where he is he's giving hand jobs in oh, the yeah, car yeah. and the car and the camera is like spiraling around the car and you realize this thing is going to go real bad real fast um, it's interesting too though when, what you say like um tom cruise's it's it's impossible to synopsize this movie because there yeah, are so many fine. stories right. and there's so Just many go details going on listen. definitely go and see this movie it's it's fantastic and, and, and i regret not buying this. this is another one i rented and wish i'd bought oh yeah yeah, yeah you want to own this one because mm-hmm. you're going to want to come back to it yeah um, i guarantee it the, no uh, i'm just saying because i lived through a lot of this stuff i don't want to yeah it's hard no for yeah. sure yeah I mean, for I'm, sure love the movie but, it was, but i don't know if i want to keep watching you don't i mean but i just would say like maybe some at some point yeah, it'll, ha- it'll right. mean something different to you yeah, yeah. Like three or four years and there's no yeah. rush that's yeah. your journey but i'm just saying i think i think it'll mean something different to you and yeah. and like to, to to talk about what kelly was saying with that whole like stripped away it's interesting too because you see these at the beginning of this film you really see these beautiful characters like tom cruise does this perfectly whatever you think about tom cruise is amazing i think he was nominated for an academy award for yeah, he this was. role and, and he won I a golden globe i'm not a big tom cruise fan and i fucking love this character yes and it's a terrible character it's a horrible character but like you go from this person who's so he's like basically a, a motivational speaker in his in his little storyline a motivational speaker who teaches men how to destroy hunt and destroy women like a pickup artist but yeah. like really aggressive oh, mean. incredibly yeah. aggressive and it's you see very him much in like this the men's rights guys you see and today. this this yeah. is very prescient by the yes. way yes. Um, yes but you get him in his in the course of his storyline as he goes down from this flashy character who's not like literally almost bearing at all right at the very beginning where he's this little pair of tidy whities and a little bit of a chub going on yeah and then super and self-possessed was though. that his real chub i good question because <laughs> we know that paul thomas anderson is known for fake chubs <laughs> i would true. say that it's probably i mean well, i know personally but using them in his movies yes. <laughs> well, we have yes, yes, we have yes, no yes. reason to suspect that it is an artificial chub okay we like would. i understand why they would give hey you know a, don't come a after me star who supposedly has an 11 inch penis is, yeah uh, a fake one, but yeah. you think Tom Cruise? I don't think he was like uh, Tom. Socks in the uh, you know when you're jumping around in your tidy whities you're just not giving us enough uh, unit. 
So we're just going to give you a little extra. I don't think that well, happened. He squeezed his, Did- his eyes like he was just sticking real hard and he was like, oh. I think it's real child because to yeah, me, I felt like I shouldn't be looking at it. But that's like, all you I was can looking look at. at. It. Yeah, and and like, <laughs> Kelly, and just the way the actors, <laughs> the actors in that room are like, kind of like, Tom, I level with it, man. Tom Tom yeah. Cruise is like he's he's pop, he's popping chub for this role, and it makes sense that this character would. Yeah, he's about to sit down and talk to a woman. Yeah, he who, thinks he's gonna rip her up. He thinks yeah. he's just gonna totally seduce and destroy this this um, reporter who is like trying to give like a real expose on this you know pickup artist, and he's excited and he's getting like no clothes on for tidy white. He's a chub, and he goes into town on her, and, her, and he is he is winning. Yeah, um, that moment, and then you, you take think. that you think. Yeah. Yeah. And then it turns it turns around, more information is revealed, and they find out that there's this backstory that he has not been telling the truth on, and she calls him on it, and it sends him into this whole spiral to the point where, like you said, he is stripped down to this really raw mm-hmm. character that you're, again, don't feel like you should be watching, but for a different reason, not because it's the shine in the show, but because it's the real truth of like, man, you are hurting and in pain and you believe it yeah and that's what i love actually i i feel like they counterpoint him and philip baker hall's jimmy gator in this way where like you i feel like you ha- you're supposed to hate um frank Mackey. yeah and you're supposed to like jimmy and then gator. you're rooting kind of for jimmy for the most of the movie mm-hmm. and i don't know about rooting i mean you know that there's you feel you, bad for him but you definitely are kind of on his side and then I feel like they kind of do a flip where you really see into both of these people and it changes. Maybe not. I mean, I don't know that at any point I was ever like, well, Tom Cruise is a good man. No. <laughs> but I definitely was like, you I had empathy him. for him. Yeah. yeah. For somebody who was abandoned by the father, you know, it was with his mother and, and took care of her when she died for him then to betray all women with this. And then in the end, fucked up shit. He does go. And he yeah. does allow himself to feel empathy for his father, and he even goes, you know, ostensibly. I got the second time I've used that word. Goodness, ostensibly. I'm gonna get you a thesaurus. I don't think that word means what you think it means. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, he goes to visit uh, Julianne Moore too. Which That's I, a huge moment. It is a huge because moment. it's growth. She represents all the things that he is bitching and complaining about. Yeah, all the things he he has told himself that women do. Right, that she's a gold digger. Blah, blah, blah. And she believes that about herself because that's how it started. Oh, that was... Her Her journey was so just heartbreaking. It was great. Um, hey. Real quick, Kelly, um, you can use evidently, mm-hmm. apparently, mm. at first blush. At first blush. Yeah. That's what I'm going to be one. using okay. from now on. All right. So, uh, yeah. Um, I have I have two um, uh, problems with the movie. Okay. First one, why you got to kill a dog? There was no reason to do that. I think uh no. well, actually uh, this is another thing between Wes Anderson and Paul Thomas Anderson. Wes Anderson always kills a dog or an animal, not always a dog. Yeah. But sometimes a dog. But in this movie they like you didn't have to. Also, <laughs> the scene with um uh William H Macy in the bar with what's his face? Oh, Henry Gibson. Are you talking about uh, uh Mr. Guy- Klopek? Yeah, Mr. Yeah. Klopek from the Burbs. Yeah. They were talking. Sardine. I, I understand that there was a lot of symbolism going on with their words. I'm just not really sure I was understanding who they were to each other and what those that, that moment in the bar was about. Well, can I tell you what my, because again, I've only seen this just this once. So my feeling was that, of course, that bartender was who William H. Macy had a crush on right. was in love yeah. with Got and that. then i think he saw that this other guy was basically full you know i think he had this moment where he, he realized rich man. yeah that maybe he didn't mean anything to this bartender and that he would you know this other guy was you know also getting his attention and yeah I guess he was, was a jealousy it was their thing, dialogue yeah. i just didn't well, understand why it was so well i i agree with that it was definitely very arch and no. you're kind of like, I don't know why they're having this wordplay, but yeah. I think you're supposed to believe that Henry Gibson is an old actor uh-huh. who is putting on kind of a big elaborate show. He has some money and he thinks he can screw this young bartender if he keeps tipping him. And, and he, he could. 
Yeah, and yeah. he's he's thinking that like this washed up. Yeah, game I guess show I just kid. didn't understand what the dialogue was all about. I understood well, the some of it was an in joke but... because um, Paul Thomas Anderson's dad was Glarty from Cleveland, the uh, the horror host, yeah. and he would say, um, "What was it? Stay sick or stay?" I think it was "stay sick" was like mm. his his catchphrase. Don't get well. Don't get well. The um and he uh. When he says that, he says, I'm sick, William H. Macy says, stay that way. And you're like, ooh, that was harsh. Oh. That was like a nod to his dad. Oh, I guess. I, this is an just inside joke. The joke. dialogue in that scene, well, I just well, had a hard time with. So this is where I think the movie is, real, is, is tricky. Because there are some mysteries in the film. And I think it's the mysteries in the film that keep you guessing that kind of help with the fact that this is such a long film. Mm-hmm. Because you're supposed to try to kind of be figuring out. There are... Um, what what do I want to not 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 profits, but there are there are these people in the story that give you information that's really important. The rapping kid. The rapping kid, yeah. this, and they are like prophets. I mean, basically, that's what they're supposed to be. Yes. you know, a metaphor to. And yeah, and like, the 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 prophets are basically telling you like we're going to tell you what's going on, but you're going to have to un- you're going to have to solve this mystery for yourself because for the reality of the people who are struggling in this film can't solve their own mystery their mystery is this is what i've done and wouldn't it i need to say it just say it out loud i need to say it to somebody and that's really important i need to say what i'm feeling i need to move beyond this thing because the shame of what i'm experiencing has kept me trapped it's just like on deep space nine when cisco keeps going back to the moment when his wife is killed Freddie and I just watched the pilot of Deep Space. And he meets... It's so weird, the timing of this. Yeah. Have you oh ever gosh, seen that? No, He's I've like a Captain seen, Ahab I'm, type, right? I've watched uh, zero kind of, well, Star Trek except for the new movies. S- Sisko's wife uh, is killed in this attack. But the important thing is... Yeah, I was making those jokes, too. <laughs> like, uh, he <laughs> never... <laughs> he, he has to meet these aliens who don't understand what linear time is in order to get over it Mm -hmm. because they're like, well, why are you still in this moment? If you live in linear time, shouldn't you be in the future? And Mm. he's like, I, they're like, why would you keep going back to this one moment? This is, and this is, it it will repeat over and over again in, in, in literature and history or whatever. This is the thing you have to understand about anything you're ever going through or, or any feeling you ever have is that that is just, you are just one more person that is, is experiencing that or having that feeling, right? Because mm-hmm. this is just part of the human condition that you go through this shit, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there's something incredibly comforting about that. There is. This isn't going to kill me because everybody else has experienced that. I'm not crazy. I'm not weird. If you can remember I'm that. not a mess. The human experience, right? Yeah, it's like Jack Torrance and uh, Danny's broken arm. It's mm-hmm. certainly it something is. I've been wrestling with over the last year and a half. It's like getting through uh, the bad shit yeah. How do you do it? Well, it won't stop until you wise up. Yeah. Figure Just out wise a way up. through. And 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 the thing that you you have to realize is that there's such a huge difference between what shame and guilt. Yes. And All right, Brene Brown, yes. sing it. All that's, right, that's I will. very Say true. It. But that that reality of it is, is these characters are stuck in this shame cycle, right? Because what happens when we don't deal with things in our brain, when we don't deal with our regrets? It we can find ways to like push it down. We can find little hobbies and little fun things. We can you know do our do our world that keeps us pushing that regret down. But that regret will find a way to rise back up again. Mm -hmm. And it keeps us stuck in that that shame cycle constantly until we figure out, until we sign away the deed and figure out how to actually say, okay, you know what? Face it. I'm I'm a human being and I really screwed up and I owe somebody an apology here. Mm -hmm. We, We are stuck. We're trapped. And the only reality is we just have to give up. Yeah. And, and stop fighting that fight and say, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm a human being and I'm really sorry what I did was, was wrong. What I did was you wrong. You gotta let go and let God, you know what I'm saying? Jesus, <laughs> take the wheel. Yes. Um, question for you. Exodus 8-2, what is that? It's the, uh, well, there's there's different translations. Give, One me of the, them give me the King James. Don't let, if you don't let go, I will send a plague of frogs. But there's also something about breaking down walls in one mm-hmm. version of it. Okay, but it does have to do with holding on to something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Basically, Pharaoh would not let the Hebrew slaves go, no matter how many times God came along to prove to him that he was God, 
and that Moses was his representative and that he needed to fucking let them go. And that's why the plagues happened. And so just one of them was a plague of frogs as a way to say, if you don't fucking let these people go, I'm going to keep hurting you over right. and over and over again until you fucking get it. And the thing is, Pharaoh never got it. Yeah, but then Pharaoh was like, the, the frog, he would stand up and he would dance. Mm-hmm. But then Pharaoh, Hello, baby. Hello, it was exactly like he'd that. go to show, uh, he'd go to show the uh, Pharisees, and they would be like, "You didn't see it's it. just a frog. It's just riveting at me. There's no top." Hat. Well, and there were these levels of these, these because basically everyone was trying to say that back in that time there would have been these magicians that could have pulled off. They were just pulling. They were David Blaining it. Yeah. yeah. So every time you know Moses would do this thing, then people, the 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 Pharaoh would call these magicians basically forward to say, "Show me that you can do something similar," and they were yeah. able to do that. So that's why it just kept growing. And again, I think there's a huge metaphor there. Like, if you don't deal with it, it's just going to find a way to rear its ugly head again and again and again. And yet we get ourselves trapped in these cycles and we can't see it. And sometimes the only thing that we can do is attach ourselves to people who we can be vulnerable around and can say, like, Oh my gosh. Like you don't see this but l- let let me be your prophet. And here's a great thing if you want to tie this in to a uh, sins of the father kind of thing that keeps coming up is that Pharaoh's inability to let go eventually killed his son. Yeah. Because the angel of death came and killed all the firstborn of mm-hmm. of Egypt including his own son. You know it's interesting and too. And that's when he let them go. When you di- Pharaoh, diagram let my people go. Is it has anybody drawn up like a diagram of how this movie's constructed like with because my understanding is it's Claudette, right? Is her name? Claudia. Claudia. Yeah. She's at, she, originally, I guess this was just going to be a movie about her and everything. She was like at the center of this wheel and everything kind of breaks off from her somehow. She still really is at the center of this yeah. wheel. Yeah. Which is interesting because I don't know if that you get that on the first viewing, mm-hmm. that how she is central mm-hmm. and that also that there are stories that run in tandem that are the same story but with different outcomes well they all do connect i mean yeah ultimately everything can connect claudio one way or another yeah and um i just think it's interesting that you have you know he does the parallel thing with the game show kids mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and where literally it's the past repeating itself and then yeah well and even like yeah. I, you know earl partridge was the old producer of the show that right. you know and basically he and jimmy have a very parallel storyline going where like earl partridge is just a little further along um in his journey of cancer of cancer. yeah and also you you suspect that yeah i mean they both abuse their children but <laughs> one, i started one is, to say one was sexual abuse right well one was and what yeah. so i mean you you almost get again this kind of Well, since we brought it up, let's talk about it. So at the end, uh, you know, Jimmy Gator, played by Philip Baker Hall, you know, he comes home, he's sick. He had this fucking meltdown on his show (laughs) because he was drunk and trying to deal with all this. And he tells his wife, Melinda Dillon, the lovely Melinda Dillon, that Ah, he's cheated on her. mother from Harry and the Hendersons, our movie last week. And Christmas movie. (laughs) Oh, you mentioned Thomas Jane earlier. He was the young Jimmy Gator. He was the young Jimmy Gator. Briefly. And um, you, you know, she she maybe kind of suspected that this, and he's just trying to get this shit off his chest, but she has this suspicion uh, where she says, why won't Claudia talk to you? And yeah. Well, she he, also knows there's more that he's not telling her for sure. Right. She keeps pushing. Like, don't you feel like he's really coming clean for a minute? And you, you're like, oh, thank God, he's not going to make the same mistakes that Earl yes. made. He's going to come clean during his last days with his wife and his family and get his family back on track. And then she's like, tell me, tell me, really, what, what is it? Well, and I, what's weird is I, I didn't think it was going to be that exactly. I. It was definitely in my head, but so then he says, well, Claudia maybe thinks that I might have maybe molested her, and but I don't know if I did. And this moment, this is what I wanted to bring up. This was such an interesting thing for me because on one hand, again, Jimmy's been kind of portrayed sort of more sympathetically maybe than Earl a- anyway. Mm-hmm. And I feel like, on the surface, if you don't go any further, it's almost like they're giving you an out 
where he's saying, I don't know if I did. I don't remember. <laughs> but then if you think just even a little bit, it's like the lamest like kid's excuse when they get busted yeah. doing something yeah. is to say, I don't know. Yes, you do. You definitely did. Yeah. They this, definitely know you and did. And you can see yourself maybe doing that if you think maybe I did. Yeah. This to me is the equivalent of ghosting in a relationship. Yeah. You you know you're not interested. You're you're trying to let and let ever, that other person know in as many different ways as possible. I'm just not going to communicate everything I need to know. Right. But I'm not giving you the peace of mind of just say it. Yeah. Say it. Say hey, you're a nice person, but this isn't for me. And this is what he's doing in this scene. Is like right. he's just not taking the step. And you get the opposite of that with Earl Partridge. Right. Who, if I if I could just for two seconds, and I'm not going to actually do. try to act it out, but I, I, I love the, this part with Earl Partridge, and this is when he's talking to uh, Phil, um, his nurse. He goes, Earl Partridge says, I loved her so, and she knew what I did. She knew all the fucking stupid things I'd done, but the love was stronger than anything you can think of. The goddamn regret, the goddamn regret. Oh, and I'll die. Now I'll die, and I'll let you... What the biggest regret of, I'll let you in on what the biggest regret of my life is. I let my love go. What did I do? I'm 65 years old and I'm ashamed. A million years ago, the fucking regret and guilt. These things don't ever let anyone ever say to you, you shouldn't regret anything. Don't do that. Don't. Don't you re fucking regret what you should have said. Use that. Use that. Use that regret. Anything, any way you want, you can use it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's just an amazing line in that in that movie in that moment where this man is dying and he says to this you know to a caregiver like use that regret to move you forward and is a motivator to do what you need to do no matter how hard it is to say that thing you don't want to say say it because the reality of it is at the end of the movie she knew mm -hmm. she the, the mom knew oh yeah she knew to just say it so how much more peace would have been given to her if he could have just said i did these things yep now the, the the her reaction who who knows but I I did these things but she already knew you just weren't giving her the peace of mind to be able to move on right. to have those answers and to be able to go to her daughter and and cry with her and mourn what had happened and what had been done to her and what shouldn't have been done yeah mm. it's good stuff and I really felt for the kid uh, uh, Specter what what was his first Stanley Stanley oh, uh, but I loved him because he took a stand. He like, took a Stanley. He took a Stanley. Freddie, I was about oh, to say that. R.I.P. Get out of here. Uh, where the, they made this poor kid piss himself. These adults on this show are so horrible. Yeah. <laughs> like uh, Because it's a show where it's kids versus adults on a quiz show. And the three adults, especially Luis Guzman's character, is so... <laughs> he is shit. If, if they... You feel He's like so great. if there weren't other people who could hold him back, he might have tried to take a swing, especially at the, at the little fat kid yeah. and at Stanley. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He was pissed because they were making him look stupid. Yeah. And, uh, but everyone was... Like, what this actually... This made me... This might have been one of the places I really connected to because all these people expected something out of this kid that he didn't owe them. Mm -hmm. I don't know, listeners, if you understand something, but I have a I have a real boner about people expecting shit that that you don't owe them. Yeah. Right. And uh, so I really felt for this kid. Everybody was using this kid, mm -hmm. and they fucking wouldn't let him go to the bathroom. He pissed his pants, and when he told them, "I'm not going to play this fucking game anymore," they were pissed they were mean his dad there was what was sad to me for this actually made me sad because he really didn't get a resolution other than the strength you may be realizing well then i can't count on other people to do the right thing for me i'm just gonna have to do what i want and that oh was my god that was kind of his moment but like at the end you know he and i do love <laughs> that he tells his father you have to be nicer to me it's not that he hates his father it's not like he recognizes like i think he has this real adult moment where he's like our relationship is gonna be fucked mm -hmm. up if my dad doesn't do some work and then his dad was his dad buck who likes to fuck no that was robert england i thought it was aaron eckhart no, no, for a minute buck, but it's buck not. who likes to fuck from kill, kill bill, bill. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> not, but isn't that the Robert Eglin? As far as like a resolution goes for that kid, for for those people who are from dysfunctional families, which yes. this is really a, a great case study on, isn't that a huge 
a huge moment in your life where you just go, you know what? My oh. parents can do no better than what they're doing now. If I'm going to evolve beyond that, I better look at what they've done and and take that cautionary tale, right? Because you can choose. Oh, Everybody yeah. in this in this movie, we as human beings, we have the choice. We can live our lives as an inspiration to others or as a cautionary tale. Yeah. And that moment for that young kid is basically, I... My dad is a cautionary tale, and I don't want to become this. And now that kid gets the privilege of living his life the way that he wants to. And no. to me, that's a huge moment. That's great for that kid. I do think it's great. I think I just wanted him to I, – I think I just wanted there to be a moment. Not that I think it would make – I don't think it hurts them. I think it's a strong moment. I think it just hurt my heart a little bit to see his dad still be such a dick. Yeah. yeah. But I do I, – that's basically – I was trying to say I love that this kid – has a growth moment like he grows up have you noticed too something that i think makes this movie like extra beautiful is there's no easy like happy ending no there's work everyone ends in a place where they're still working on something Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. except for the dead um like all the survivors yeah (laughs) they all stop in a place where they're like Life isn't easy. There, this isn't the end of the, the my story. Right. This is the beginning of me taking better care of myself. Yeah. There's no happily ever after. Maybe there's hope. Maybe right. there's not for some of these people. But they have to work. Yeah. 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 You got to do the work. You better work. And you better work, bitch. Why? 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 In the why, end, why? we're all responsible for our own happiness. That's right. It's yeah. A you can't require movie. that out of anybody else. No. And that's why that's good. That kid said no. Now, the dad didn't, it's not requiring the dad to do anything in that moment. It was requiring the kid to nut up and be like, I, I'm putting us, I'm going to try to put a stop to this. I'm going to work on this for myself. Mm-hmm. But but we ha- we all, you know, we have that moment, you know, and, ha- and how many times you go, well, I didn't have the, the best parents or parent or whoever that gave me this thing. And then you have to realize for one day, you, you now you're responsible for giving yourself that thing. Right. It's a shame. You shouldn't have to know that at stanley's age you shouldn't but but, but if you but can sometimes figure you that to. out at stanley's age imagine the evolution that That's stanley true. can do kid's gonna be raring to go at like 22 mm-hmm. well and you still have he'll still have work yeah yeah we always have work it, it really is a great I, I i i thank you for for choosing yeah. this i've always yeah. wanted to see it i just never got back around to it and uh you know because i was telling uh listeners i was telling the crew earlier oh my goodness he was <laughs> that i hadn't seen i've seen bits and pieces because um i was very into amy man for a little oh. bit so i was basically going on LimeWire <laughs> and downloading what uh, ended up being basically all the songs off of this soundtrack and uh so i'd see little bits and pieces from it or you know read stuff like and trying to find like the titles to mm-hmm. songs and stuff but uh um, I'm really glad to have put in the time and and, and really like yeah. sat back and 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 watched it. How about uh, Melora Walters? Huh, she was real good. She was. Uh, she was Claudia. great. She doesn't. She's not in enough stuff. No. Every What's time that? I see her in something, I end up looking her up on IMDb because I'm like, who is that? She's so good. Mm-hmm. Hey, we, uh, how about Patton Oswalt? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> he a shows up cameo. for a half a second. And J- what's his name? The magician J. Ricky J. Ricky he J. Just passed away. Uh, yeah. Ricky November. J. Just passed away. He did. That's he was so. uh, on the X-Files at least mm-hmm. once, right? Yeah. Neil Flynn was uh, one of the uh, gentlemen. Yeah, the janitor. Yeah. I yeah. Mit- Somehow I missed him. I knew it's he was a in brief, It's real brief. It's when he's, 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 when he's going men. after the fugitive on the, uh, on the subway. Yeah. Did you see that? Remember on Scrubs? I, I, well, I remember that. I mean, I, in the movie The Fugitive? Yeah. But do you remember on Scrubs? Remember I do remember on Scrubs. That was funny. Do you remember Do you remember that? that? <laughs> You remember? Did you put a pin in there? Just in saying that, um, you the the thing one thing you have to give in this movie is credit to Amy Mann because she does the soundtrack oh, for this fantastic. movie, and she actually comes into the movie and uh, she does, I don't think she cameos in the movie, but sh- her song but is everyone sing yeah it sings this in, in a I don't know in lesser hands this moment could have come off as real cheesy to have this moment where the characters are literally like breaking fourth wall and singing the lyrics to this song, but in this moment like I. I yeah hairs on the back of my neck stand up yeah well even just thinking about it but certainly when you see it happen in the film one it's even in the movie because like the whole beginning is talking about cosmic coincidences and whether they really are coincidences Mm -hmm. in the universe sometimes taking a hand in things and so you can almost look at the fact that all these people are maybe listening to this song at one point or another during this development and so at this moment there's this confluence where they're all 
singing these this emotional song at the same time mm -hmm. because we know that that's what claudia has been listening to they he even sets it up so that it's not like a silly moment because mm -hmm. she's she listens to you know amy man's music all the time so it's like he establishes that she's an artist in this world and that all of these people at any given moment really could be listening to it and so it, it feels like just one of those things where it's like you can see the the actual path running through everyone's life there like these and, things and do happen yeah. and there's that moment like these things you happen. build up so much hate for the tom cruise's character that when you have that moment that's such a pressure release valve moment for him to be singing that because yeah. you're like this character he's a real person yeah it, it's it is like a just total you could almost see the steam come out of his ears yeah uh and you're like oh this guy is um there's a human being yeah there's a human being in there yeah and that was just like a moment where you're just like oh i think that might have been the thing that really like when i saw this the first time that started getting me choked up yeah well definitely. what i love about that yeah. too got a little moist in and, my eyeballs and I okay I don't, I don't know if Jeez. you can take it all the way here but in that moment I can and take it anyway. there's take a couple there. moments where you almost feel like maybe he doesn't even really hate women and that that's 90 percent an act that he's convinced himself is real you know he's pretty fucked up he is so you do up. wonder you're like also there's part of me that thinks that I was telling Amy this. I wonder if Tom, this is what Tom Cruise is going through with the Scientology stuff. Yeah. If that's why he tapped into something like so potent in this movie is that he is fucking like trapped in some sort of God, yeah. But pattern. There, there's, I mean, yes, he is amazing to watch, and you can't take mm -hmm. your eyes off him. But there are so many of those those moments where these actors hit those like real, like the the thing. Also, I think this movie explores is the idea of like vulnerability and the armor that they're all putting on, and that is, I totally think you're hitting on that with the the women. <laughs> uh, it, it's just that he, ladies. he's hitting on the ladies. It is is that that is his armor, right? Yeah, it's and his at power. The moment, yeah. At the at the that moment, like okay. If 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 I'm gonna move on, then the armor has to come off, and then yeah. you get to see the truly vulnerable part yeah. without the armor. And, and like you, know, you could psychoanalyze the whole thing too, and say that he had to take care of his mom while she died, so he was never ever gonna have a real relationship with a woman again because that destroyed him, who he was. Mm -hmm. You know, like so much is tied up in our mothers. You know, and like I think like it could be like, well, I can't ever connect with a a woman again because this is what fucked me up to begin with right mm -hmm. it, it probably has nothing to do with most all this serial stuff killers you go back and you you find out about the moms and you're like yeah oh, there you go yeah almost always there you go there, there, there you go mm -hmm. serial ding, killer ding, one ding. or like on that adam sandler album when she's like why don't you boys go and get in the pool and play with your cock and balls mm -hmm. remember that oh, she said i'd make do. you some jelly sandwiches i do oh dear dark amy save me <laughs> I don't know that I can. Save you gotta save yourself. Me. You the um this this so again this movie like I I didn't know who Amy Mann right. was, um the and then once I you know watched the movie immediately had to go find the soundtrack pr probably bought it and um and Good. listening to it and then all of a sudden like I'm I remember hearing like greatest hits of Amy Mann and Voices Carry came mm -hmm. on and I'm like yeah what like yeah. what crazy time loop is this world because I had no idea this song that I had listened to ten years earlier than that yeah she's got a hell of a she does I thought the first time I had heard her was on Buffy the Vampire Slayer mm -hmm. and then same thing where I was like I started finding other stuff i'm like she's been around a been lot around. longer than anybody but realizes she sings on a song with rush does time stands still she does huh. I didn't time know that. stand still mm, yeah. she does that song mm. it's amy man she's also canadian mm. get the fuck out of here <laughs> i won't <laughs> i won't is that why all of her albums smell like maple <laughs> <laughs> You get a f you get a free bottle of Log Cabin oh. with that every time you purchase a track on iTunes. <laughs> well, Mikey B. Yes, Amy. This was more of a birthday present to all of us. It was. Help you us turned it around. Explore our feelings. Mm -hmm. Good. Turn it around. I hope, that, I hope that it was good exploratory feeling stuff. Hey. I was exploring myself <laughs> the whole time. Yeah, I had therapy tonight. Yeah. So and then watching that movie was a little bit of therapy. 
It's always therapy. Good. It was. I, I really did. I, I have to say, like, uh, you know, sometimes movies are just whatever. Um, but certain ones, and it, it's not, I don't think there's any formula to it. Certain ones just hit you. Mm. And uh, this one definitely was one of those where I looked at my own life and, yeah. I, you know, I, I had real thoughts and feelings. I was in, When I was in high school and I was going through my counseling degree, I wanted to write a book or have a book. And it's probably, maybe it's done at this point already uh, called Watch Two of These and Call Me in the Morning. Because I think this is like one of those movies, like if you had like a, you know, just a, just a moment, just to sit down and really be there present, it's, it's going to do something for you, mm-hmm. especially if you're in the right place for it. Um, another one of his movies that's really great, I think it might have even been his first, was Heart 8. If you've never seen I that. Love Heart, Heart 8. Heart 8's really good. It, it came out when I worked at Blockbuster. And I remember it being, Remember that? It was one yeah. of those movies. I remember that and Bottle Rocket coming out around the same time. Mm. <gasps> Wes Anderson. Wes Anderson. Oh. And I remember those two movies were in a heavy rotation for us. Yeah. I feel like I feel like those two and the and the Cohen brothers yeah. all yeah. share a kinship. Yeah, there's a definitely a, a weird whimsy. They create the, these the worlds, but I Oh certainly <laughs> the Fairly Brothers. How'd you get the bean above the Franks? <laughs> but I, I feel like Paul Thomas Anderson, I think. Now again, the Cohen brothers also can get to real stuff. Oh yeah, but I also think they they tend to have more whimsical worlds. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I think PTA the PTA mm-hmm. yeah. gets closest to reality of the three. Mm-hmm. Well, that's it's just the same time. Like last year, my my movie pick was um, Hot Sucker Proxy with yes. the the Cohen brothers stuff. But you know, the, these this this film was just inc- for me. It's such a heyday of when I started falling in love with. <laughs> With films. We got dogs. Well, over and it's a real dogs. Elsa li- actually licked my, my eyeball just Well, there now. you go. <laughs> so Not I have everyone pink can say eye. that. No. <laughs> um, this, really, this is like a filmmaker's film. Like, this mm-hmm. is like a serious movie movie. You know what I mean? Uh, but it's, it's also like so genuine. Like movie. Oh, it's like, super genuine. That's the thing is like, there's, I don't feel like it could have come off, like you said, as pretentious in anyone else's hands. Like there's, to me, I feel no pretense in this movie. No. Yeah. And if you t- explain to me what this movie was and I had never seen it, I'd be like, my eyes would roll completely upside down. What's this white again. people shit? Right. Yeah. But it was a very white you, movie. When you experience it, the rapper who is the wise. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> Uh, oh, Wes and Wes, I started to say it myself. Paul Thomas Anderson said yeah. he would. He wishes he had cut it down. Yeah, he said he wished he'd cut twenty I, minutes off. Yeah, I, I, I don't, probably. I don't. Couldn't. I wouldn't want to take anything out of this. Well, movie. you can cut out the dog don't fucking dying. Cut this film. Yeah. PTA. But that just shows the chaos that they're 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 when you create these he situations. <laughs> there has there are real consequences for entities other than the people who are directly involved in what's going on. It's already sad enough. Like the dead guy in the closet at the beginning. It is oh, actually yeah. the you pointing that out is actually a good uh, that that is it, it does make sense because you know uh uh Philip Seymour Hoffman spills those pills and one of the dog eats them. That's a very r- real thing that a lot of us can relate to. Yeah, I've dropping done it. a pill and being like, "Shit, I don't want the animals to eat that." I did that just the other night. I, I dropped yeah. a bunch of ibuprofen everywhere. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what you cut out of this. Phone. I don't either. I, I thought I it was fine. How it was? Has there is a blast s- radius to everything you do. Yeah, a ripple. All Has right. anybody seen uh, Phantom Thread? No, not yet. Okay, uh, have you? Mm-mm. I, you know, after, uh, so I, I saw this and then I, I saw Boogie Nights. Yeah. Um, after this, cause I, you know, I love this. And then went back and watched Heart Eight and was like, this guy is awesome. Everything he does is, I'm, this is my favorite director. And then Punch Truck Love came out. Yeah, well, I've never watched that one. I do not like. Punch I Trunk don't Love. like it at all. I've heard oh, that. That's, yeah, all right. That's let's why I never again. watched it. Yeah, because everybody was like, "It's oops." I just punched the dog. Punch, <laughs> punch dog. Love. Punch drunk dog. Yeah. Oh, uh, you do have sorry, punch baby. Dog love. Um, <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I yeah, wanted to like yeah. it too. I really, I, did too. Tr- I really tried, and I was just like, "Ugh, I don't I know did. what's happening." Everybody came out going, uh, and I was like, I felt like a stunt casting type of thing to me mm-hmm. so well, i never watched it the thing is it wasn't adam sandler's acting that put me off i didn't like the script like it yeah. felt too i don't know what he was going yeah. for I, I and i probably watched it when it came out and i, and I yeah. haven't gone back to he, revisit it so been maybe smelling his own farts since <laughs> magnolia yeah I don't know. Because so, I think he understands it, that he peaked. Uh, yeah. I bought that on DVD yeah. um, sight unseen when it I came out. And I was like, all right, Are let's you sure do it wasn't this. Click? 
and you thought it was punch drunk <laughs> no. love. I remember mine because I had a nice slip cover. Yeah, and did like you have cool the double? Yeah yeah, 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 I did too. I was so excited. I, might I still watched have it, it actually. And I, and I traded it. Yeah. Traded hey, it. Somebody back when who you could trade. loves and gets to live with Maya Rudolph. Yeah, mm-hmm. and Adam have, Sandler. No PTA. Oh yes, <laughs> is all always going to be all right in my book because you think they're an in a bubble bath together? Right now? I hope yeah. I'm in a bubble bath. Well, well, I have heard Phantom Thread, so maybe that'll be a challenge to watch in this in it 2019. Looked, like I saw the trailer and I went, nope. Yeah, that's kind of like I had the same reaction where I was like, I don't. I, I said, can love I love him and this not want to see that. <laughs> and uh is there is it just because it looks boring oh or? god yeah. it looks just excruciating it looked like a room with a view I, oh god right. i yeah to me i don't know i probably i'm probably wrong uh, I, see, I remember seeing, i think we saw i i think i saw it with with you guys yeah. at the esquire yeah. the trailer at our, our local yeah. indie um theater and i remember seeing the trailer and getting like the like the ooh, i want to see this and then i didn't see of it so see I got, I, I got excited because of his name yeah but then i was like this doesn't have that kinetic crazy energy that his other movies yeah have. the trailer didn't no. i don't i like i i, I maybe, see that i don't know it's a, it just seems really sedate okay well i, I, I like i'll, I like I'll that, explore it that's my like, 2019 resolution there you I go that crackling electricity in my uh, poppy paul pops. thomas anderson shit. poppy tops yeah nappy taps it's got a crackle there gotta be frogs flying out of the sky yeah <laughs> i do also love boogie nights i boogie it's a great movie. so fucking good it's great great it, it gives you a real hopeful ending it does yeah. it it I get something different out of it every time I see it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, whether uh, that be horny. Philip Seymour Hoffman in that movie. Oh, he break. was so sad. Your heart. There's so many characters in that that are just like. I miss him. I do too. Me yeah. too. He was great. I, I love the hopefulness. I love yeah. uh, of that movie particularly uh, at the end. Um, it, it feels like everyone is maybe going to be okay. Yeah. Because I don't take any, not, I'm not. I'm not angry at you, Amy. Get the fuck out! But of I there. just want to say, and and then I'll let this be done because I know yeah. it's late. But uh, I didn't take any of that cartoonishly. There was certainly humor to me, but I felt like Dirk Diggler was a very real person. Oh, they felt real. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, yeah. I, I did say that was the wrong word. I didn't know what you I. You said it, for. but I don't know if I felt that you meant it. Well, you know. Uh, well, uh-huh. you're you're dealing with characters who are working with like stage names as characters. Yeah. So you, there's a bit of distancing built into the concept to begin with. Yes, where they're characters who are putting up these weird alter ego ideas. But that's what's great because they're all vulnerable kids. But then you f- you get to know who they really are. Yeah, and then and, and do you, you remember what's his name? The old man. I don't know what you mean. The the pedo Burt Reynolds. He was yeah. he was this. It's it's well, Jimmy Philip Gator. Ba- Philip yeah. Baker Hall was he was he, also, worked, he worked with uh, Burt. Re- yeah, yeah. But what I mean is, remember in in Boogie Nights, he was the one who went to prison, wasn't he? For no, being a pedo. That, that was the other guy. That was the colonel. Oh, that was the colonel. They worked together. Yeah, but it was Phil one Baker of them. Hall was not the pedo in that uh, movie. Just aiming at her tits. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, Mike. <laughs> hey, any bigger my than a pleasure. <laughs> my pleasure. Hey, man, any- Mike pleasure. Mike, Mike pleasures. pleasures. That should be your spy name. <laughs> <laughs> you got it, Mike pleasure. <laughs> there's there's a, something I can help out. Mm-hmm. Just give a call to Mike pleasures. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get business cards. <laughs> My pleasures My pleasure. at your service. My pleasures oh, here to serve you. So next week, Andy has uh, told us his pick is Kill Bill Volume One. A Old connection again to Buck. Uh, yeah, connection to Buck. Jesus, uh, make the connected. wheel. Buck no. the dog from Married with Children. Yeah, yeah, exactly the same guy. Yeah, mm. hold on. Let's hold that with a grain of salt. I know he said it tonight, but he's yeah, also he been indecisive. Oh yeah. So listeners. Don't don't like commit to your hope. He's debating no, he said something it. easy and something hard, but he did say to all of us that was the movie. Yeah. So he I said think, it. I think we should lock it he in record. He's been threatening me with Lars von Trier. It's on record now. He said, but remember, is I changed my mind. Kill no. Bill Volume One. But we've only got a few days. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's yeah, Wednesday we already. We We're not Sunday. We're yeah. Wednesday. All right. Um, uh, at the end of every show, we always uh, say hi to our Beelzebubs patreon.com slash notlp you can if you give it the uh, bls above level we're gonna say your name mm-hmm. first name jimmy b jimmy b cleveland 1865 jimmy b climbs the 14 steps you can't do this roof. for every name <laughs> of a high-rise building and jeremy. jumps off jeremy and cassie, cassie. are in Come the on. first floor apartment they hear a loud splat and they go out to investigate dead eye dead eye walks up on the scene eating a hot dog saving a <laughs> banana for dessert <laughs> Amanda. Amanda unknowingly walks past 
as the banana is consumed and the banana peel is carelessly dropped onto the sidewalk. Dale? Dale slips on the banana peel and falls into traffic. Uh, Mandy? Mandy, driving a 1979 Ford Pinto that came back in a time machine from the future, (laughs) swerves to Miss Dale and plows into the storefront of Adam's Pet Store. (laughs) Brooke? Brooke, shopping for a replacement hamster, (laughs) is inundated as as puppy meal puppies and snakes and birds all fly I flee the, the burning pet store. <laughs> she has to rescue them all, though, right? Yeah. Ernest? <laughs> Ernest, a volunteer firefighter, was going to ask his fiance to marry him that day. Tree and Alex? As he slid down the fire pole into a giant pair of firemen pants, Tree and Alex, <laughs> the, uh, Dover, the uh, Dalmatians of the fire department of Cleveland, were licking snot out of each other's noses. <laughs> mm-hmm. Brandon Boone. They transmitted the disease to Brandon Boone. <laughs> when, when he came by to drop off a basket of fruit to show the appreciation of the local fire department. <laughs> Meanwhile, Bill, the, the pet store burned to the ground. <laughs> and Bill, the insurance adjuster, <laughs> showed up to give an estimate to the now homeless owners. Blake. Blake. Uh, fell out of the sky because he was scooped up <laughs> while scuba diving, looking for rare gems. Mark. He fell on Mark's bad. <laughs> Finally, Elise. And then Elise came up and took everybody's wallets and emptied them of <laughs> cash, but then put the wallets back so no one would suspect a thing. One is the loneliest number that you'll ever do. Do 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 do. Two can be the saddest one. It's the loneliest number since the number one. Yeah. I dropped my gun today. I'm a mess up. I screwed up. I dropped my gun. You guys. I'm not even supposed to have a gun. Yeah. No. You didn't get love, y'all. Give and get love. Happy birthdays to all of you from our birthdays. Yeah, from our <laughs> birthdays. To celebrate our birthdays in your life. Did you say Ann Arbor birthdays? Ann celebrate Arbor. your our your, birthdays your Ann in Ann Arbor. <laughs> and days. We should do that. Celebrate one year. Aunt Arbor's thanks birthday. For, oh. Thanks for being. Uh, thanks for being a friend. Thank you, you for being a friend. Back again. Mm-hmm. Thanks for celebrating my birthday with me, y'all. Any we should watch some time, gold, Golden Palace reruns. Yeah, yeah. let's do that. Ooh. Let's do it. Underappreciated, right? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Bye. Bye, guys. Frankenstein was wondering if he should go to bed when his old buddy let her face. Put on dawn of the dead And Igor made the nachos In a severed human head And they enjoyed the movie With their friends David Kessler walks the streets of London